Hi guys, Tracy here with another scrap room tour. Today is going to be my much promised but rarely delivered Razcog tour video. So I have five, I have a total of five Razcogs. I have two black ones right there and there. And then I have one cream one in the corner right there. And then I have right over here beside me when I scrap, I have two more beige ones or cream colored ones or whatever you want to call it. So today I'm going to be pulling out each one and showing you how I have them organized and what I'm using them for. So stay tuned if you want to see more Razcog storage goodness. We're going to start with this one, which is where I store my card making supplies. Then this one will be pretty quick to go through. It's my letter storage, so mostly thickers. And then this one over here is my big shot and die cutting station. And then we'll end right here beside me um, with my two Razcogs that are used for this one is used mostly for project life and pocket scrapbooking and then this one is used for miscellaneous other mostly stamping and alphabet die cutting uh, purposes. So this is my first Razcog. It is my card making Razcog and in it I store all of my card making stamps as well as a few other supplies. These stamps are mostly lawn fawn stamps for card making and I store them in this basket here. It's just a very shallow basket. It's about six and a half inches wide and 13 or 14 inches long. I actually, I think it's 13 inches long. And these little white fabric baskets, um, they come from, I'll show you where, they are the same baskets that I use to store my washi and other things in, they came with these cubes. I have another one right here and see how it's missing one of its baskets? That's the missing basket is right there. So I'm going to walk you through this Razcog first so that you can have a look at what things I have stored in it and how I have them stored. So I have my mostly, as I mentioned, mostly lawn fawn stamps for card making and I do have a lot I have like way more than anybody would ever need I'm not sure why I have so many but I store my lawn fawn stamp sets like this I store them in these these are like the Avery L storage pockets but I use the no name brand and then I just cut a piece of cardstock to fit inside of it I think it's cut seven inches by maybe five and a half inches whatever just fits inside of it and then I keep a piece of magnet on the back with the with the with the dies that coordinate with that particular set and so I have I don't have dies for all of the sets. Like for this one, I have the add-on dies, but I don't have the main dies for this stamp set. And there are lots of stamp sets for which I don't have any dies either. So uh, I have them organized here into categories. So this first category is called house and household stamps. And I also keep home stamps. So uh, the little village stamps go in here as well. They're almost all lawn fun. So anything to do with being inside or house or cooking and food and that sort of thing. Then these are all my critter stamps. So these are land critter stamps. So gnomes I'm considering critters, uh, little animals, um, little people even, critters from the farm and the frog one and all of those sorts of things. Then I have sea critters as a separate category because I do have quite a few uh, fishbowl and aquarium and under the sea type of sets and I typically use them together. So I have those right here. Then I have a category called holiday stamps. These are all um, mostly Christmas. I don't really get Easter and those sorts of things uh, stamps. I, I almost, the only holiday that I scrapbook is, is Christmas, so they're all Christmas. 
Then I have miscellaneous stamps, and this includes um, just various stamps that don't fit in any category, but also a whole bunch of Stampin' Up! stamps. And what I did with my Stampin' Up! stamps is I took them out of their packaging, I kept the little Stampin' Up! sleeve, and I actually do still have the CD cases that these go in just in case someday I decide to go back to the other way of storing them, but I just put them in the same little envelopes and that way they can be stored along with all of my other stamps because I found that I wasn't using them when they had to be kept separately because they were stored so differently. And then my last category is sentiment stamps. So these would be anything that are sentiments or words or phrases to go on the inside or outside of different cards. So that's what is in most of this top uh, part of the RASCOG. Uh, I also have these two, these are washi storage bins. They look like this and they used to have right here a little sharp piece of metal for and a dowel that goes here. I don't use the dowel and uh, it used to be so that you could store a whole bunch of rolls of washi and just kind of pull them off like a roll of scotch tape. It really doesn't work very well for that so I actually bought these uh, for storing, I can't remember if I bought them originally for washi tape and then very quickly decided to store other things in it instead, or if I knew all along that they wouldn't be good for that. But they make really nice little trays that I use for all sorts of different things around my scrap room. As you can see, uh, these insides of cards fit very, very well in here. So these are what I call card inserts. So these are pre-cut pieces of various kinds of cardstock. So I have Bristol Smooth cardstock, I have Copic Friendly cardstock, and so these are about the size of the front of a card. Um, and these are the size of the front of a card. Then I have Strathmore Mixed Media Vellum Surface Paper. I have Distress Watercolor. That's Again, it's just all pre-cut to card size. I've got regular watercolor paper that's pre-cut. I have vellum that's pre-cut. I have um, a variety of other, these are just miscellaneous card fronts, so just regular card stock. So these wouldn't be for any particular project. Uh, and then I have card mats, and these are for going inside of cards. And uh, so they're cut a little bit smaller than the front of a card. Then I keep these here because uh, these are like a water and a hill or a cloud and a hill stencil that kind of go all the way around. They're made by MFT and they're great for using for stenciling. I keep a couple of extra pieces of Bristol Smooth cardstock right here just in case I need to run it through my die cut machine. I keep some pre cut and scored card blanks here and also a couple of envelopes here. I keep most of my pre-cut card blanks and envelopes in a different place but this is just a handful of them in case I need them. So moving on to the second tier of my RASCOG here of my black card making RASCOG. Uh, I hope that this is going to be easy for you to see, but it's going to get harder and harder for you to see what's in this as I go down. Uh, but here I keep some little post-it notes that I use for either die cutting or stamping, uh, making masks and that sort of thing. I have a little container here that holds some uh, post-it note tape. And then I have more categories and this is another one of those baskets. I have my first category here is sentiment dies. So these are any sentiments. And what I do with them is instead of keeping the packaging, I like to kind of have a sense of what they look like when they're actually cut out. So I just run them very quickly through my die cut machine. As you can tell, I don't spend a whole lot of time doing things like making sure I get the little bits out of the centers or anything. I just basically want to know the scale and size and shape of these die cuts so that when I look at them like this, I don't have to figure out what they say and what they're going to look like when they're cut, especially since they're backwards. I don't have really great visual spatial skills, so I have a hard time imagining something reversed. So that's that. So these are sentiment dies. 
And remember, this kind of picks up from back there with sentiment stamps, so it's sort of like just a continuation, uh, but most of the dies end up being down here on the second tier. So then the next category is sentiment dies. These dividers, by the way, are just pieces of very inexpensive cardstock, white cardstock that I cut to uh, be basically just a little bit bigger, a little bit taller than the, uh, than, than the stamp pockets that I have. So sentiment, so sentiment dies, then I have uh, sentiment frames. So these would be anything like these are all of the banner dies from freckled from Lawn Fawn. Then I have like these, this is a stamp and die set that will frame out different sentiments. These are more frames for sentiments and I've got the dies that go with them. This is actually not Lawn Fawn. Um, this is a smaller sentiment set set. These are not Lawn Fawn either. These are, what is this? Heffy Doodle. Uh, strips of ease they're called. So they're just basically little rectangles that you can make whatever length you want. My next category is called scene building. And so these are anything that helps me to build a scene on a card. So I have this stamp set, which I really, really love. It's called Get Grounded by the Inkblot Shop. And it just gives you a little bit of ground for your critters or characters or whatever to stand on. So I really love that. There's a die here from Hero Arts. I have the, um, uh, what is that called? A mushroom die. I've got like a shaker, some decorations for Christmas, so various things for just setting various scenes. I've got a pond, I've got some clouds and grass and fence and hills and hillsides and mountains and all sorts of things. You don't have to see all the things I have. Then I've got a category of background. So this is basically any background die that just sets a background for you whether it's a scenic background or just a pattern background, they're all here. Then I've got basic shapes. So this is basically like um, any kind of frames, squares, circles, scallop circles, rectangles, all those sorts of things. And then my last category here is card accessories. So this would be anything that goes along with cards. So here I have this open me and push pull stamp set and the dies that go with it. I've got some borders. I've got some little just extra things. I also have my... Um, all right, and I'm storing them kind of wrong because I used to store these on the other side. So these stamp sets, these are all of the stamp sets that go with the reveal wheel. And I have them with this washi tape with the hearts. So these are all my reveal wheel sets. And then the, this set of washi tape, this is all of my little mini box. I forget what that's called. What is it called? Uh, the shadow box card. So I've got all of the shadow box card sets. And so I just have all of them on these magnetic strips. I have two per pocket so that I don't have to use a, a ton of pockets. But so basically the only specialty sets that I have are the reveal wheel and the shadow box. And so I just keep them marked with this washi tape. What I have to do is go back and mark them on this side now that I store them this way. I can't really see which set quickly and easily is which. Okay, so my apologies. This is kind of hard to show with one hand, but when I try to do it with the tripod, I end up not being in frame. So I'm gonna try it this way. This is a Martha Stewart little desk organizing like thing, configuration. And so in here I have, this is my only sympathy stamp that I have. It's a very old rubber stamp on a block. And so because it's the only one I have, I just keep it here. And then these are basically dies that are used for, that I could use for scrapbooking. So I've got these hearts, I've got these tags. These are basically any kinds of shapes, bows and little floral shapes and frames and that sort of thing that I might use for scrapbooking. These are two um, stamp sets that are from, I very briefly belonged to the Hero Arts um, kit. I didn't really belong. I just bought two of their kits and these are them. So, um, I still have one of the kits fully, like this is all of it, but this is just this. Yeah, I have all of both of them. One is a coffee and these stamp sets are 
much, much bigger than my other stamp sets, which is part of why I decided to discontinue. Also, I, I just have, I have enough card making stamps. I really don't need more card making stamps. But anyhow, I really, really love this plant. Like I love those Japanese lanterns. And so I couldn't resist buying this kit, even though I had already decided that these kits weren't for me. So I just stick them back there because there's room back there. It's basically the only place that, that there is room for these stamp sets. Okay, so now I'm gonna move down to the third tier, the bottom tier. And uh, this is this holds mostly my card making six by six paper pads. So I store, most of them are Lawn Fawn, and I store them in these little sandwich bags. I cut the Ziplocs off of the sandwich bags, and that way if there's any scraps or whatever falling out of the edges, that it all stays contained inside. Okay, so when I'm using it, I pull it out of the bag. I only have one hand, so I can't really do that right now, but I just pull it out and I use it, and then I stick all of the scraps back into the pa the paper pad and stick it all back in the in the plastic baggie, and then it's all stored. And you can see in this one, for example, I have some scraps sticking out, so that just shows how it keeps everything contained. So these are all of my six by six paper pads that I might use for cards. And what distinguishes card making six by six paper pads for me from scrapbooking six by six paper pads is that these are kind of like mostly all tone on tone repetitive patterns as opposed to um, more creative, um, intricate patterns. I don't know how to describe it other than that. So. I do have more six by six paper pads. They're right over there where my finger is pointing. Um, and that's mostly the smaller versions of scrapbooking papers. So also in this bottom tray, this by the way is an Antonius insert and I will put a little information, um, a picture or something of this. You can get this at Ikea as well as the Razcogs are from Ikea. And by the way, if you're wanting something similar but either don't have an Ikea around you or don't care to pay the price for these, uh, you can get knockoff versions of these at Michael's and I've seen them at Costco and a couple of other places. So uh, there's that as well. Um, this is just a little container that I keep the little stamps that Lawn Fawn sends you when you buy, order something from them. And a couple of other just small miscellaneous, these are mostly dies that I just don't want to let go of because I love them too much, but I really don't use them very often. And I also keep my embossing folders right here. These are all of my embossing folders. I don't use them that often, but when I do use them, it's for card making. So that's why they're down here. And then in this little cubby right here, I keep my die cut and colored images and I keep them by theme and so this is like by mostly by stamp set so this is the coffee stamp set the love you a latte this is the ice skating mice I, I colored a whole bunch of ice skating mice thinking I would make Christmas cards and then I did not these are baking images I have some blender images like mixed drinks and stuff these are a whole bunch of barbecue images that these I cut with my brother Scan and Cut. Most of these I cut with my brother Scan and Cut. I've been on a coloring and cutting little rampage here. Some of these are other stamps. And then these are just some, I really like the colors of these guys. So I just wrote down the colors so that I could remember. So is there anything in the back? No, there's not really anything in the back. Just another little box with some more uh, colored images. So now let's pull out my second RASCOG. This is my letter sticker storage RASCOG. I store my thickers in this RASCOG. I have done it this way for quite a while. And then for a while I stopped storing them this way and I missed it so much 
that I went back to it. So uh, this is my second time around of storing them this way. And I'm just, I'm not going to change it again because I just love, love, love it. So as you can see, these 12 by 12, or sorry, 6 by 12 inch sticker sets uh, fit beautifully in the RASCOG. Beautifully. Let me just come out a little bit. There we go. Uh, so I keep them organized by color. And uh, as you can see, I actually repackage my, my thickers. So I actually don't keep them in their original plastic packaging. What I do is I buy my own six by 12 inch bags. I buy them in bulk. And then I always have tons of them on hand. I don't really buy new sticker letter stickers anymore. I got a lot of a lot of the products that I have are from being on design teams and just getting many, many kits every month and way more uh, supplies than what I can scrapbook with in any given month. So over the years, I've just accumulated a lot and I don't like to waste things. So I just keep it in my stash and then I have lots to choose from. So these are way more letter stickers than what any normal person would ever Ever really need so um, just keep that in mind you don't really need a whole RASCOG just for storing stickers unless if you've been on design teams and stuff so uh, this is just an example of how I store my thickers in these in these bags and I just keep the little topping off of the packaging and I reattach it to the bag I do have a YouTube video that shows how I repackage my thickers so I'm not going to talk too too much about it right now so I keep these dividers. It's just a piece of stiff chipboard, uh, kind of like the backing from paper pads and that sort of thing. And then I just use my tab punch. I love my Stampin' Up! tab punch. It's actually right there. I'll zoom in a little bit so that you can see it. It's right there. Um, that's my favorite tab punch, and so I use that for almost everything around my scrap room. So this tells me that everything here and forward is black and gray, and I keep silver in there too. And then this one tells me that everything between here and here is white, different kinds of white letter stickers. So they're not all thickers, but they're all kind of similar similar types of stickers. Now on my second tier here, I have all of my colors. So it goes pink, red. I do have orange, but I didn't, I'm missing the, uh, the tab for the orange. It's probably on the end. Yeah, there it is. So I haven't, I used to keep them upright. And so the tabs need to be put back on. Uh, then I have yellow, then I have green, all the different shades of green, and then I have blue. And then in the very back, I have browns and beiges. So you can see that these tabs right here really help me find them. And of course, if I need something that's closer to the blues or browns or greens, then I can always kind of root for it from this direction pretty easily. My bottom tier includes gold and silver. Actually, I think just gold. Yep, it's all just gold. So anything that's either glittery, sparkly, or metallic all comes here under gold. And then I have another tab right here that is multicolored. And so all of these are just any kind of multicolored letter stickers go right there. And then I just have a couple of extra um, older letter stickers that I just can't get rid of. They're mostly basic gray, which I just adore. I don't use them that often, but I'm not ready to let go of them yet. Now here's another one of those 13 by six and a half inch or six inch uh, white baskets again. And here, if you don't have cats, you might think that this is really disgusting, but my cats love chewing on plastic. And so there's cat marks. It doesn't, they don't chew on the actual products. They just chew on the plastic. So I know that that's gross and I apologize if that makes you wanna, you know, throw up a little bit. But uh, here is where I keep my loose alphabets, and I just basically keep them in their packaging with some, pa with, with some plastic around it so that they don't go missing. And then as I use them, I mark off, as you can see, I cross off anything that's been used so that I have a sense of what letters are left. So I don't go searching for letters that I don't even have. Oh, these are the bags, by the way, that I repackage my thickers in. I just keep a couple here 
I store most of them someplace else. So these would be anything from these Jilly Bean Soup ones. Again, most of these came in kits. Uh, some wood, wood veneer, uh, some cork, and these little, these I love. I think I bought these because I love, I loved these tile letter stickers. Or not stickers, but I loved these tile letters for a while there. So I bought all of the ones that I could find. I think I bought these too because I adored these Heidi Swap letters. So I bought a couple of packages of them. They, one package came in a kit and then I bought as many as I could find because I loved them. So that's my letter sticker, Razcog. So we're gonna say goodbye to these Razcogs and have a look over here at this Razcog. I'm just gonna pull it out into the center of the room so that you can see it better, but that's where it lives. It's my die cutting Razcog. So this one I have actually assembled a little bit differently. So as you can see, the top tier is actually assembled upside down so that I can use it as a shelf that houses my big shot. And I like to just keep it out like this and be able to pull it over, use it, and then kind of swish it back away and it rolls right over in that direction on its own. And um, it's pretty easy to, to use like this. So I keep my, my Big Shot out and ready to go with the main platforms that I use right there. I can use it pretty quickly and easily. And then, so I just wanted to also mention that since I bought mine and assembled it this way, they actually came out with a cutting board that fits on top of your top tier so that if this was assembled the right way, the cutting board would sit on top. It would kind of like sit right here and uh, you could put your Big Shot in it and it's designed to kind of like sit on top. What I like about that idea is that if you wanted, you could store some extra stuff in this space. For me, this space is is kind of like dead space because you can't store anything in it because it's upside down. So I really like the idea of using the cutting board if you can find it. But here in Canada, the cutting board is hard to find. Maybe they didn't release it here or something. But anyhow, I, I assembled it this way before they even came up with that. So, But also, I think that there are people on Etsy who will make you kind of custom made things to go inside of your Razcog. So that might be an option as well if you didn't want to assemble it this way, but this works really well for me. So my second tier here includes all of my big dies. As you know, a lot of my thin dies are in with my card making supplies. So that all stays over there. And I'm often using these two together when I'm card making. So these are just my steel rule dies, which I really mostly use for projects like mini albums and that sort of thing. I don't have a huge collection of steel rule dies, but I do have several. I used to be a Stampin' Up! demonstrator, so I have a variety. I also have some of things like the extra long big plates, and I've got some extra cutting things and accessories and stuff there. Also, the Big Shop people sent me some stuff. Like, I've got, like, this and this, but I have things like extra impression pads and... Um, I think I have an extra set of plates here for when my current plates get so that they can't be used anymore. So that's all that I keep in there. I also keep some shims and stuff like this is just a cardboard shim. Then down here is, uh, I keep in like some extra things like this is stick it and some things that go along with my big shot. But then I also keep my laminator and my small portable iron down there. And in this thing are laminate refills, like laminator refills with the pockets and stuff. And then I also keep some stitching and piercing supplies here just because that's where they were always stored. So that's where they are. This is like a stitching template that um, I don't really use it anymore, but it's easy enough to store it here. So I keep it. Okay, so that leaves us with my last two Razcogs, which are probably my most used Razcogs. These two right here that sit right beside me when I scrapbook right here. When I scrapbook right here, it's easy enough for me to just reach right over to these. Uh, in particular, this one is the one that I use the most these days because I'm doing a lot of pocket scrapbooking. So that's how they look. I'm going to give you a little tour of these ones now. So let's pull this one out first and from the top you can see that I have another one of these Antonius inserts 
and there's there's room in the back here for me to put some stuff. What I was doing was putting some of these larger stamp sets on their sides right here, but I've decided that I want to be able to just grab this and put it on my work surface so that my video can include some of my selection process. So I decided to not put a bunch of stuff down behind it because every time I move this, these are gonna slip down and then I'm gonna have to fiddle with getting them put back up so that I can put this back. So I think that this is just easiest for my video making um, process. So in this Antonius divider, as you can see, the, the dividers, the kind of like two big dividers in the middle are the perfect size for four by six cards for Project Life or for any four by six items. And so I have my cards sorted. Again, I'm using the same tab punch from Stampin' Up! that I use elsewhere in my scrap room and I've sorted my Project Life cards by color and some of them are double-sided and when they're double-sided what I do when I'm sorting them is I pick which side I think I'm more likely to use and I sort it by that color and then if there's multiple colors on it I just sort it by the dominant color so right here for example this one is multicolored it could have easily gone into multicolored into my multicolored category which which is a category um, but it seemed kind of like this one would coordinate nicely with green so I put it in with my green cards even though it doesn't necessarily have green then these are all my multicolored ones here in the front. So I have grid cards and then I have some snap cards that are just like cat snap kids, cat themed snap cards and then I sort it by beiges, black and white, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, purple and then multicolored is how I sort it and then I have here I have seasons, which is anything that's seasonal. So some of them are these month cards from Studio Calico, but also anything that's like related to certain times of the year. Like this one says, hello summer. So I just put it in the seasons section. And then I have specialty cards. And so this is my only specialty card that I have right now, but I also have a couple of pieces of acetate and I have these tabbed cards too that can only go in certain pockets. So that's my specialty. Then I also keep all of my four by six stickers here. These are sticker sets that came in kits. Most of these kits I haven't used, I just sorted them into my stash. So it goes from word stickers to label stickers. I've got a whole ton. I've been using up my label stickers like crazy because I did a big project recently. More label stickers. And then it goes from label stickers to letter stickers. So these are all letter stickers right here. Some of these are from various kits over the years, and then some of them are uh, letter stickers that I bought from Kelly Perky. I stocked up on a whole bunch of Kelly Perky letter stickers. So that's the center. Then both of these sides, as you can see, they don't perfectly fit a three by four card, but they can, you know, it, it's okay, like they have to sit at a bit of an angle, but it's fine, you can still store them. Uh, I can store, as you can see, a whole lot of them. I sort my three by four cards in the same categories, so beiges, black and whites, and grays, um, red, orange, yellow, or pink, red, orange, yellow, green, blues, and then purples here in the front. And then over here, I have a variety of other ones. These are some rounded corner old Becky Higgins ones, kind of like my favorite, like the creme de la creme of Becky Higgins rounded corner um, three by four inch cards. And then I have some grid cards in three by four size. And then I have um, some other categories, this, basically the same categories. I have seasons. So this is anything specific to seasons. And then these are any specialty cards. So I have more. Some of these are specialty in that they're kind of shaped and stuff, but others are cards that kind of go together that I didn't want to mix up all through my stash just based on the colors. And then, oh yeah, this whole category is my multicolor category. So that's the top. And then you'll notice that in addition to the Antonius insert, I also have these. These are called Sunstra, they're called Sunursta. And so as you can see, I have three of them. I bought them um, a long time ago when I bought these two first Raz Cogs. Um, and I really love how they hang on the side here. They really 
I feel two ways about them actually, because on the one hand, I feel like when my carts have a whole bunch of things hanging off of them, they don't look nearly as neat and tidy and simple as what they look when they're just kind of stacked up here beside one another with nothing hanging off of them. But at the same time, I really do appreciate the extra storage space. And so particularly now that my space is serving two purposes and I do have to work from home, in this space, it's good for me to have, I need two different sets of headphones for the telehealth that I do. I keep a set of um, magnifying glasses here, even though I wear progressives now. I used to need these when I was coloring and sometimes my progressives aren't quite strong enough for what I'm doing. So I sometimes need to take them off and use these. I call these my Chuck Schumer glasses because if you've ever seen me wearing them, I look kind of like Chuck Schumer when I wear them. <laughs> and just like hand sanitizer and uh, mostly work stuff in there. Then this is where I keep my um, my Lawn Fawn stamp chamois. It's a little bit wet still because I was using it this morning. I just keep it in a little Ziploc bag. I don't close the Ziploc bag, but what I find is that if I just leave it in here in the open, it dries out too fast. Like before I'm finished making cards, it'll be dried out and I'll have to go wet it again. So I find that if I keep it in here and I can just keep the plastic folded over, it will keep it from evaporating quite so fast. And then down here, I just keep a variety of different cloths for art journaling and just like clean cloths. They look dirty because they're stained, but uh, just for drying and wiping up stuff. My bottom tier here is basically just this tray and the tray holds extra page protectors and extra, uh, I use these templates for my project life. So these are de extra design A and I've got a whole bunch of these templates and a variety of things that I might, uh, just a handful of things that I might be putting in my pocket pages, like as the week goes by and I might be, oops, I'm too zoomed in here, aren't I? As the week goes by and I might be going to do some scrapbooking, I'll just kind of dump things on this tray as time goes by like packages or envelopes or little things that I've printed or gathered that I might want to put in my pocket pages. So that's what that is. And also if I'm in the middle of a project and need to stop, I can kind of put it all in that tray and it'll stay mostly in the right spot, even though it's at a bit of an angle, like it can't sit, it can't sit flat in there. It's at least it's an okay place to put a work in progress. So that's that one is probably my most used RASCOG. Now this second one here is also um, at times my most used as well. So it's actually wrong. It's usually, it usually looks like this. So I had it stored backwards there. But the reason I store it this way is that these stamps I often use for project life and scrapbooking, but mostly for project life. So I keep my stamps, again, they're in the same pockets that my card making stamps are in. And what I do is I, again, I just use the same white liners that I pre-cut myself. And I always have a whole stack of them so that when I get some new stamps, it's just a matter of grabbing one of these in a pocket and I'm ready to go. I store my stamps by these categories. I have everyday slash home. And that's pretty catch-all category. And then I have foodie stamps, including coffee. And I have technology and TV. And I also put games in here. So it's kind of like entertainment. Then I have travel. And I have summer and holiday office, school, and documenting. So these are kind of office-y types of miscellaneous is anything that doesn't fit in any of the other categories. Words is just basically any stamp sets that are mostly words. And then, um, what does that say? Dates and times. And I keep my favorite date and time stamps in a different place, but on the flip side of this is another one of these. So this is another one of those Martha Stewart office supply storage units. There's one right there as well in the bottom of that. Oh, and also I keep one right here on its side on my office surface. So anyhow, this one holds some oversized stamps that I don't really have space to put anyplace else. So I have a bunch of background stamps here. 
that I have for art journaling and kind of bigger projects and didn't have any place to store them so I put them here and then I also have some close to my heart stamps that I don't have any place to store so I just put them there that's all that that is for oh and I wanted to mention that I keep my smaller stamps in these little pockets here these are pockets that I made myself they're basically my six by 12 inch bags but cut off so and then I pre-cut another piece of paper and uh, store my smaller stamps in them as you can see I have a lot of stamps that I don't store that way I don't really like three by four inch stamps I kind of hate them because I don't like looking through these to find the stamps that I want, like the images that I want. I typically just look through these. So then my second tier here has more stamps, alphabet stamps. So I've got smaller, these I do like. So I do like smaller alphabet stamps. So I've got these and then I've got the bigger alphabet stamps are all right here. Again, I've been scrapbooking for a long time. Then I've got some art journal stamps. So these are all stamps that I use in mostly in my art journal. I don't use these kinds of images very often in my scrapbook pages, but sometimes I do. Then these are, um, what's her name? Vicky, Vicky Booten. And then I've got some Jane Davenport stuff and some Dana Wakely stuff. And then I've got, this is basically face stuff. So it's both stencils and stamps that are faces that I mostly use for art journaling. So that's that. Then on the other side here, I've got a huge collection of stencils. Almost all of these are from Studio Calico kits. Almost all of these ones. And then almost all of these ones are from Scraptastic kits that, or Hip Kit clip kits. Uh, which I got, oh, some of these are from Scraptastic kits as well. Um, so I got a lot of these just over the years of being on design teams for kits. And then these Tim Holtz ones I bought. So these are ones that I bought for specific reasons because I knew that I could use these different shapes, patterns. And then I have some Beck, some uh, Vicky Booten ones. And this, I don't even know who makes this one. But then I have uh, this company, I Stencils. I absolutely love their stencils. See, my cat got to that one too. Um, I absolutely love their stencils. They include this badass stencil line, which has some really beautiful, elaborate, great stencils for art journaling. Check out their website, iStencils.com. As you can see, I've got a ton of them. They sent me all of these to do a video. I did a video a long time ago just showing all of their stencils. They're, it's just, they were so generous. I was not expecting them to send so many stencils. Um, they asked me which ones I wanted, and I said, I, I like this one and that one and that one, but I really love any, so send me whatever you like. And they just sent me so many. Uh, so anyhow, I've got a lot of stencils is, the, is the, what that one boils down to. This is another one of those washi tape storage things. I use them everywhere. They're amazing. I also use them over there for some of my mixed media supplies. So stamps and stencils is most of what's in this RASCOG. But in the bottom here, I have some more lettering things. So these are lettering dies. So these are all alphabet dies. I have a, a big Stampin' Up! Set, alpha set. And then these are my templates that are basically, like I said, I like to be able to see my letter sets. So this lets me know what I have and what it looks like when it's all cut out. And then I keep them here. Most of them are in those same stamp pockets that I keep my stamp sets in. So those are my letter dies. Did I call them stamps? I might have been calling them stamps. They're letter dies. Then this one is too big to go in one of those pockets, so it's in this. I think this is a Tim Holtz um, stamp storage for some type of a binder storage system, but I just use it. I just use them as like pouches. These are one of my favorite stamp sets. It's Jen Scow's 
Cyprus alphabet. I have it in upper and lower case and I adore them. Thank you so much for sending them to me, Jen. And then I have this pink fresh studio set that I just fell in love with when I watched this. I was randomly, for some reason I saw a Kathy Zilski video and she was using them. They're just gorgeous. They have this die set that includes the, the stamp like the letter, but also the really skinny outline of the letter. And there's so many fun things that you can do with this. And then, of course, this uh, Louis ABCs is one of my favorite letter sets because it has that kind of typewriter look to it. And I really love these. So as you can see, I keep all of my thin letter dies just and, and matching stamp sets and whatnot right here. And then I have a stamp... Uh, scrubber that I don't use all that often and then I have a few things here that just I didn't have any other place to put them these are stamp sets that go with dies that I have or punches that I have and then a couple of paper tray ink stamps that I just I don't know what to do with them so I put them in there it's another one of those little washi tape storage thingies So there we go. That's what I'm doing with my RASCOG storage. Tell me in the comments below what you're doing with your RASCOGs. What are you storing in it and how are you organizing it? Because I'd love to hear more ideas. Uh, because as you know, if you follow my channel, I tend to change my storage around quite often. And so just because I'm storing things this way now doesn't mean it's going to stay this way. Although this one is going to stay because I learned my lesson. I'm keeping my, my thickers stored that way from, from now on. Take care, everybody, and have a really great scrappy week.